Congressman, thank you so much for having me. It's so great to be here. Now, is it wild being back at your old school? It's awesome. I come here every now and then and just recharge my battery. So it's good. good. It's good. What's up, man? I thought, you know what's funny? I thought. I love that little pump it up and the battery recharge. So here we are at a school you founded, yeah. uh, but you were raised by a single mom. Tell us a yes. little bit about what that was like. What was she like? She was awesome. Uh, she worked in the post office uh, for 33 years. It was me, my mom, and my three sisters. And you know, I always say my mother gave me three things. Uh, she gave me love, she gave me stability, and she gave me like a sense of self-worth and self-esteem. What led you, motivated you to leave this school that you had founded and run for Congress? You know, I just started to see a, a pattern of, of kids struggling with so many things that were beyond the control of the school. So kids struggling with being unhoused, uh, kids having family members who were entangled. Kids in who them. were the students here. Our students, yeah. yes. Kids who were, you know, have family members who were criminal justice entangled. Uh, kids who, they, we saw a dramatic rise in self-harm and suicidal ideation in kids, like the year before I decided to run. And then that same year, which was Donald Trump's first full year in office, 34 kids died within the K-12 school system in the Bronx, and 17 died via suicide. So I just saw kids everywhere, like, being hurt or killed or hurting themselves, and elected officials were not talking about it at all. And they definitely weren't making a connection between policy and how harmed our kids were being by our policy choices. So that was happening, and I just started to feel, like, numb and like powerless as a principal. And so I made the interesting decision to, to run, for, run for the House of Representatives. You got into a, a bit of a back and forth uh, with Congressman Massey over gun violence, and he tried to argue that teachers should be armed. You were not having any of that, I think it's fair to say. Uh, but why is arming teachers not the right idea? As somebody who's been in a school, it, it feels crazy to me to ask this question, but it is true. This is something a lot yeah. of people are proposing, advocating for, getting more guns into the hands of teachers so that they can defend themselves. Yeah, so, and I asked uh, Representative Massey, has he ever been in a school? Has he ever worked in a school? And he, he fell silent because he has never worked in a school. So that's why I asked him that question. Where do I begin? So teachers have to uh, plan curriculum, revise curriculum, plan lessons, implement lessons, grade tests, meet with parents, engage with the community, provide emotional support to kids, and of 10 other things that I'm forgetting. And oh yeah, let's put a gun on their hip so that they could go to training to learn how to use this gun and prepare for the possibility of a mass shooter in their schools. We want kindergarten teachers to do that. Like, they're on the ground with kids, playing with blocks, engaged in Montessori education, gun is on their hip while this is happening. That's the kind of society we want to live in? I don't think so. You've also talked a lot about um, the need for a more holistic approach to regulating social media platforms. Um, the focus has been on TikTok. You've pointed this out. Yeah. But the sharing of disinformation on Facebook, on Twitter, has long been a problem. There are lots of proposals out there, but what would you like to see happen uh, at the federal level to address all of this disinformation? Yeah, a, a comprehensive piece of legislation that deals with the issue of safety and security and the sharing of our data all over the world, which is currently happening right now. And so that's why I spoke out against the attacks on TikTok. Because if we ban TikTok tomorrow, our data will still be bought and sold and shared on the open market all over the world. And the Chinese Communist Party would have access to that data as well. They do now if they choose to buy it. So it's a disingenuous and misleading conversation to just focus on TikTok. On TikTok, you have been outspoken against a ban mm -hmm. um, for a range of reasons. And you can, of course, and should yeah. repeat all of them that you want to. There, is there anything that you could learn about what the Chinese have access to, what they're doing with it, that would prompt you to support a ban? 
Yeah, I mean, I haven't seen any evidence of Chinese espionage or Chinese... The intel or anything. Yeah, yeah, I haven't seen... There hasn't been, like, a top-secret congressional briefing on uh, what China is doing with TikTok. We've never had that. At the same time, Facebook, in real time, ignored Russian interference in our 2016 elections. Like, that happened. That's a fact. That's documented. But we had no conversation about banning Facebook. So we just need to be honest about what's happening. And the last thing I'll say is this. In my opinion, TikTok is just a better product, period. And this then smells Facebook. To, then Facebook, then Instagram, then Twitter, then it's a better product. To reach people, to connect with people. To reach people, to connect with people. I get much less hate and vitriol on TikTok. It's more enjoyable uh, to engage with. It's more educational. And it feels to me like they're just a better product. We got to get rid of the competition. Ban TikTok. That's what it feels like. I know there's some places in this school that have special meaning yes. to you. Should we go check one the of them out? The whole school. But yeah, we could, we could go to a couple places for sure. All right, after you. All right, so the studio is over here. Yes, so this is the multi-purpose room. This is where our kids have gym and dance Let and, and a lot energy. of different things, yes. But this is our state-of-the-art recording studio. They did not have anything like this in my middle no. school or high school. This yeah. is a, it was a few years ago, yeah. but still. Yeah, no, absolutely. Now, are you musically talented or inclined? Uh, I got some a little bars. I got some, <laughs> some raps every now and then, but I'm not going to spit right now. Okay, um, yeah. okay, fair enough. We'll save that. We'll save that. We'll check out for what's sure, online. For sure, for sure. Well, this is great. Now, I know you have a favorite bakery I think we may be checking out. Yes, absolutely. Are you hungry? Martins. Should we go get a snack? Get a little snack. Let's All right. get a little There's snack. always time for a little snack. Of course, absolutely. Yeah, of course. All right. Okay, what do you typically order here? So, an almond croissant. Okay. Warm it up, please, if you don't mind. A warm almond croissant, warm. okay. Warm, it's very important, it has to yes. be warm. And a coffee, you know, that, that's fine with me. And um, usually when I'm hungry, I get like the Martine's omelet, egg whites, avocado, onions, tomato, but I'm not gonna get that now. So you're a lifelong New Yorker, a proud New Yorker. Now that I've spent oh, yeah. the day with you, you love New York. Yeah, ride or die. I mean, New York is uh, New York's an incredible place as a state. I'm from New York City, so obviously I have a bias towards New York City. It's just so many people, so many cultures, so many different backgrounds. Now, uh, someone you've heard of, Marjorie Taylor Greene, uh, you, you had a little bit of a small altercation with her, verbal altercation with her. So tell me what was going through your head when you told her to go back home you when know, she was here. First of all, I was angry that she would even come because she's coming for political theater and, and to help with her Because it was the day of the Trump arraignment. It was the day of the Trump arraignment. So it's, it's, for her, it's about theater. It's about going viral. Um, it's about fundraising. And, and, and I've heard she wants to be the VP nominee. It's been a hard couple of years for the country, I think it's fair to say. Even a couple of weeks. I mean, we had the shooting in Tennessee, another mass shooting in Kentucky. Um, obviously, the Trump arraignment, indictment and arraignment, a lot of things that get people down. Yeah. But what gives you hope as a, as a member of Congress? My kids, um, you know, my daughter is nine, and I have the privilege of raising her and looking her in the eye and taking her to school and spending time with her and going to the park with her and all of that. So I'm always inspired by her um, and hopeful as I work to raise her with my wife and my other two kids. I don't want to forget the boys. They'll be mad at me. Of course me. not. <laughs> but um, when I visit schools and talk to kids and young people, I mean, they're all, they all get it intuitively. They have great common sense. Would you ever want any of your kids to get into politics? If that's what they want, if it's something they're, they're passionate about. But I hope by that time we can get big money out of politics and have paid leave and universal child care, and universal health care, and some of the other things we desperately need to save ourselves from ourselves, in addition to common sense gun reform, which hopefully includes the banning of assault rifles. Um, so hopefully we can give them a better world than we have now. Well, Congressman Bowen, thank you for spending time thank with you. me today. Absolutely, thank you.